Last night we started to see how the world, the linear world is a hoax. And we, when we put so much faith in the future and spend so much energy preparing for future outcomes, we really are taking our mind and our energy away from the present moment and we're just getting distracted. And whether we're thinking about the past or planning for the future, whether we're feeling regret and replaying, rehashing memories in our minds as if they could have been different, or whether we're concerned and worried about possible outcomes in the future that we don't like. It's really a distraction away from the stillness and the freedom of the present moment. And so I thought I'd talk about something that most of course, the miracles teachers don't talk about it, I don't think I hear anybody talking about it, but um, it's called hypothetical thinking. That's the, the problem. It's not so much just the linearity, but when we're thinking about the future and imagining possible future outcomes, sometimes many possible future outcomes, those are hypotheticals. You know, whenever you're having a conversation with somebody and you're pondering a number of possibilities that could occur in the future, it's common to be saying, well, hypothetically speaking, just say so-and-so did this, or I did that, or this happened. Or hypothetically speaking, if there was a, a tsunami or, or a hurricane or a tornado, um, or hypothetically speaking, like the economists, we go into a recession or a depression. Uh, there's, you know, so much energy is placed on these hypotheticals. And think of it in terms of like imagining, pondering relationships that you've had. Where are the relationships heading? Will we last? Won't we last? You know, all these, all the energy that's put into hypotheticals in terms of relationships. Uh, or even it could be a spiritual community, you know, just hypothetically speaking. Hmm. And um, the thing that you have to have in order to have hypotheticals is linear time, you have to have cause and effect apart. As if there are these real scenarios and real memories that occurred in the past and these real possibilities that could occur in the future. It's really a it's a system of lies. It's like a cobweb uh, that the ego has set up. And there comes a point on the spiritual journey where you, instead of like, you know, we've been talking about practically speaking, we're going to join with people this week about next steps, you know, what's coming next. Um, that can be practical, but, but what's even more practical than next steps is starting to explore the whole idea of hypotheticals. Like, can they really be? hypotheticals. Um, or perhaps is, you, some of you have heard of like set material and different metaphysical teachings on parallel universes. Sometimes they'll say, well you got this going on in this universe, but in a parallel universe <laughs> you have I mean, the exact opposite going on simultaneously. That's a real alignment. Simultaneously I'm getting divorced in this life and I'm getting married in the the parallel universe, almost like just a flip side or an opposite. And parallel or simultaneity is an interesting kind of thing. And, and what you find is that's what the teachings of the Course in Miracles are, is that that cause and effect are together and not apart. In order to have hypotheticals, in fact, in order to have past and future, you have to have cause and effect apart. And if cause and effect are together, then what does that mean in terms of time? It means that time is simultaneous and non-linear. It means that all of time is, we'll say, so to speak, happening at the same time. Talk about a mind bender. <laughs> you've been addicted to thinking time is linear and then you're like, what? It's simultaneous. Well, that's quite a, an interesting idea. Now, if time is simultaneous, then you really don't have any problems. You've just <laughs> solved the whole human condition and the whole conundrum. Because 
you know, problems are always remembered or anticipated. You never have a problem just right now. There is no problem right now. They're always remembered or anticipated. And so, if you could realize the impossibility of hypothetical thinking, how quiet and still your mind would be, because you wouldn't waste any more time trying to figure out the future, or lamenting the past, trying to plan a better future, or trying to, to say, I wish I could forget when this happened to me, or that happened to me, or when so-and-so attacked me, or so-and-so grievances. What would happen to grievances if time was simultaneous? If, if it was no longer a sense of the past having a reality, you know, the grievances would be known too. So this is kind of an important topic to start to see the time is simultaneous. Now, some of you have learned a little bit about quantum physics. You know, of course, years ago, you know, they, they thought the world was flat, and then they, they thought that all the stars revolved around the Earth. And then, you know, Isaac Newton comes along and says, no, it's not, the, there's a sun, and Earth is just one among the planets that revolve around the sun. It's kind of, everything is like turned completely around from what everyone believed. And then we had Newtonian physics, which is basically measuring and uh, kind of inferring the physical laws from what was observable and empirical evidence. And then once we got into quantum physics, then we started to realize that everything that we thought we knew from Newtonian physics, which is basically everything we were taught in our science books and in our history books and everything, was not true. You know, that's, it's kind of disheartening when you, especially if you put a lot of time into learning things, to just find out the rug just got pulled out. And quantum is completely different than Newtonian. And it's more, instead of time being linear, it's more like out of the entire cosmos, we'll say, of possibilities, that based on your belief system, your mind draws down and selects just so much, just like a tiny little sliver out of the potentiality of everything in time and space, and that's what it seems to be observing through the, the human senses, this tiny little sliver of perception. And in The Course in Miracles, Jesus says, perception is selective. It's so selective that you're only perceiving what you want to see. And what you don't want to see is not there. It's, that's how powerful the mind is. You just perceive what you want to see. And what you don't want to see, you don't see. You don't perceive. Uh, you just feel the emotions that you want to feel. Uh, and the emotions that you don't want to feel, you don't feel. It's like a filter based on the ego, based on the belief system of the ego, which just selects perception. Some of you probably had the experience when, you know, you go out, let's say, to buy a new car. And if you've ever had that experience where you go out and you, out of all the possible vehicles you could get, you select a car, you select a make, a model and a color. And isn't it fascinating when you get on the highway with that car and you start looking around and you go, damn, I can't believe it. Because it's really, it's like, it has got to be more than coincidental that you start seeing that make and that model and that color driving by you. And they're driving by you, yeah, and you're driving by it. And it's like, what's going on here? Is this, is this my mind or what? You know, we have sometimes laugh because we'll be in the main house over there, we'll be in there, and you know how the main house has those big windows, giant windows with the kitchen and everything. And we'll be in there just talking, you know, all our encounters and everything, and as we're mentioning names here, <laughs> you always, on cue, come across the screen. So we have to do is mention your name in there. There you go. Right. Well, talk about what they're talking about. Mention the name. There you go. Right. It's like uh, the Truman Show. They're on a loop. All you have to do is think of them and mention their name. In. There they go. Every time. Interesting. 
That's amazing to me. I mean, if it happened once or twice, it's like you could say it's a coincidence. But when you sit there all day, <laughs> and it happens over and over and over, it's like, that's amazing. Just was thinking about, there they go. <laughs> Here I am, that's me. <laughs> and so, we're going to get into a bit of quantum tonight. Because it's like, the way we've been thinking in linear terms is you know, it's just full of guilt. Uh, you know, it's like the past, the karmic thing. The past seems to repeat, and we seem to be making some of the same mistakes again. And we can even recognize it. Like, we scratch our head like, this looks vaguely familiar, this relationship thing I'm dealing with, didn't I just, and then the time before, and then the time before, it's like, huh. it's easy, but here it is, it's, it's kind of like that Carly Simon song, and if you're willing to play the game, it will be coming around again, it just loops, like in the Truman Show, they're all on a loop, it just keeps coming around and around and around. Let's just say scientifically, not at random at all. It's like the same patterns over and over and over. And so the movie tonight is a quantum movie, but it's not like what's a bleep where it's a lot of theory, a lot of uh, pondering from a lot of scientists and physicists. No, this is a this is a a drama. Uh, this is a um, relationship movie. And also, this movie is really great for teaching about hypotheticals. It's one of the best movies you could ever pick. 